Hello and welcome back to awtoolbox.com. My name is Glenn Keller and in this demonstration we are diving into some of the data inside of Team Center's Active Workspace client. In previous videos, we have taken you through on a tour through the client to show you all the little gadgets and gazmos that the client has to offer. In this video, we are diving and using all of those tactics to actually create, manipulate data and learn a little bit about it. So to start with, let's just go ahead and search for some existing data in the system. So I'm just going to do a general search here. Uh, I played around with my filters. so. I'll open those up and I'm going to look at all of the different types of data that are is available. So key term is, is each piece of data in a team center software or in active workspace is going to have a type. And based on that type of data, you can do different things to it. Whenever you're standing on a component, you can see what type of data it is um, up in the top area along with the release status if it's been locked down or the date modified and who owns it. So the types of data matter based on permissions, how it interacts, if you can submit it to a workflow, all of those types of things. But in general, there are some just basic rules. So when you're looking in Active Workspace, for the most part, you're always going to be looking at a revision unless you have an intent to go look at the top level item. So in Team Center, you have what's called an item, and then under that, you have an item revision. And then under that, you have like Word, data sets, PDF, Excel, anything that needs to be attached to it uh, to help define it. The item ID is exposed on the item and item revision. So ID, name, etc. are on those locations. So when you're looking at data here and you're looking at a revision, just note that the item is what's going to have all of the revisions in it. So that revision is maybe approved and then we want to revise that revision to create another. The revision will still have the same ID, but you'll have a second revision that's in kind of a working state. And there are rules that say to bring the associated data down to that revision or leave it blank so that you can go through all of your checks and balances to attach that data again. The data inside of it could be revisions or file data that's attached. So if I'm looking at the interface of Active Workspace, you can notice that this is a revision that I'm standing on. I could use where used to open up its item. So I can see the item is here. And if I open the item of that component, which I'll do in a new tab. So I'm going to come up here and say, open in new tab. So at this point, the item will open and you'll see that I can see all of its relative revisions. So this is one of the few spots you'll be able to see every revision related to a selected one. You can also see other attributes about it. If I close that panel, go back to my original, you'll notice that I can see anything else, like whether it's used in a structure or not. If I go to the overview page, then I can see its properties. It'll give me a preview. If this was a PDF data set, I'd see the PDF. I can see the drawing here. Um, other attributes, but your page may look a little bit different than this. You can also see their attachments and work with the attached objects. And based on what's attached where, you may get additional approvals for these attachments versus the ones down below. Changes are going to be relative changes. Maybe this is an impacted impacted part, or maybe this is a problem item in the scope of a PR, ECR, ECN process. And you'll see that there and kind of how it relates. You can also see the history of the object. So the history is going to be like, how many times was it revised? Revision history has been changed. Um, you can generate reports on the data. So you can come in here and say generate report and do a general report, maybe a sign off history report for workflows and then hit generate. 
and it will generate the report and try and download it for you. So there's just a lot of different things that you can interact with the data with. Um, but if we were to filter down and look at something like a data set, a data set or a file can be something like a PDF. And if I look at PDFs, a Word doc would be another example, an Excel doc would be another. But if I look at a PDF, you can see that this one opens up and the page looks different. So typically a, a file doesn't have children and therefore it doesn't have attachments or some of the other components that we saw up at the top. It does have the where use component, but that's just on this main page. So there was no reason to have a secondary page. So there's a lot of things that are similar, but there's also a lot of things that are different between those two types of data. A couple of rules of thumb is when you're dealing with revisions, that's what you're typically going to submit through a workflow. And then the workflow will dictate what attachments go into the workflow with that object. Um, when you're uh, checking in and checking out an object, you would typically check out the top level object to lock it down so that you could interact with its, its property values. But you can check out and check in file data independent of the revision. So just take a note, these pages do change depending on what you have selected and you do need to understand what types of objects that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Those will help you with the filtering and, under, and um, your general awareness of what you're looking at inside of the system. If we look at this screw that's sitting here, then you can see that it changes to include 3D data. So this one, if we look at attachments, has an attachment of a model.jt file. And this is essentially visualization data relative to the object I have. Um, so in here, you can also see the nxcad data object is above it, the part file. And if I come into 3D on this object, you can see that the object will open and as long as the visualization system is up and running and one of the functionalities you have, you'll be able to interact with that data in the display and take measurements and do different things. Now, if the data happens to be an assembly of some sort, so let me do a search here, see what I can find. Let's just open up the cutting head, full assembly. When you open up an object itself, sometimes that object will have an associated assembly to it. So when you open it up, you'll still have your primary tabs like where used, etc. But because it has an assembly, you will also get its structure on the left hand side. Just note that the 3D now has an option up here. So it, they've just kind of moved it to 3D up here. And the reason for that is you're no longer looking at that individual part in 3D mode. Now you're looking at the combination of all these parts in 3D mode. So if I come into 3D here, the attached, each one of these has an associated JT file. And what the server will do is it'll just lay them over top of each other. And that gives me the ability to toggle on or off using this little button here, the visualization of that component. So if I rotate this up and I can see it here, and then I select this component or that component, whatever be the case, notice some of it grays out and some of it doesn't. So I'm isolating those components. And then if I turn off that button and just click it, notice part of the assembly hides. So there's a lot more to the visualization components and you can expand these subsections down a little bit more. But in addition to the attachments, there could be other types of attachments that work with other areas of active workspace. If I go back here and we take a look at some other search result types, um, as we look through different types, you'll see different interactions. Now, in general, they all have a properties page, which allows you to edit the properties of the selected object if you have permissions. If you wanted to edit it, um, typically there'll be an edit button, but you can come in, choose edit, 
and it would be available here as well. I would have to go into my Explorer and select an object I have permissions to. Because I didn't have permissions to those other elements, I couldn't edit it and the button disappeared. Now if I select this object, notice that the edit button does show up. So I'll go ahead and open this. We've seen editing in a table before. If I open it full screen, notice this doesn't have an assembly associated to it, um, but I could start building one by using the content option. So if I do content, I can see the assembly view of this. But if I go to overview, I can see the top level. Either way, notice that if I go to the edit option now, I have edit. So I can choose edit here and I can say this is my new part again, going to be a bolt. So I'm still working on it. And then I'll say um, save. So let's go to edit and choose save edits. Now I could have chosen cancel checkout, which would have just rolled it back. I could have saved it and kept it checked out, but the checkout process essentially just locks the data so nobody else can work with it. You may not have to check out the object specifically. You could just edit it in place and save it. Um, but if you need to edit a lot of things about the object, then you could lock it down. Just be careful. You don't want to submit those into a workflow with anything checked out. So in here, that's how you're going to edit the data. And that's a little bit about how you can navigate and interact with the data. Just note that one thing that we didn't really highlight on too much was the where used. And you'll notice that we had went into the associated item on the data, but there are other components here. So if I go back and I find an element that is in an assembly or utilized in an assembly, then like this hex socket, if I go to where used on it, you'll see that it's used in this assembly. So this structure over here contains this object. And if I go down, you can see kind of where that is. So learning about data inside of Team Center uh, is essential to know what you're looking for and what you're looking at. But it's also essential to understand how the data is saved in the system. So anytime you're looking at something like a set of data, you're searching the database. And when you're going to your explorer or you're looking at folders, everything that you see inside of the active workspace window is a pointer to that database. So you can think of this as a shortcut. So short cut um, to an object in the database. So if that is a shortcut and there's only one of that object that ever exists, then anywhere that you may put that object is going to be another shortcut. So this differs a little bit from what Windows does. If you copy an object from one place to another, you now have two objects. In Team Center, you have a pointer to the same object. So in here, if I cut this, cut it out. I have now got a link or essentially something in my clipboard of that object, but there will be no other shortcuts to that object in the system. And then where I typically will store things like shortcuts to objects that I like or will use a lot, I'll come in here and paste them in my new stuff folder, which is also the place that default things that I create in the system are built. So in here, I can see I've got a shortcut to it here. If I copy that, I can paste that in my home folder as well, just to kind of prove a point. So I'll paste it. And then you'll see that if I expand, I have two links to the same object. And we can even go further with it, and we know it's the same object because there's a checked out attribute here. They've got the same ID, they're both checked in, and if I check one of them out, so we'll come up here and we'll say edit, check out, you should see a little icon show up for both of them. So that's how we know that both of those are a shortcut to a database object. 
Just note that this home folder is a nice place for you to create shortcuts to data that you use frequently. I'm going to cut this shortcut for now. And I'll keep this one in here, but I am going to go ahead and right click and choose check in uh, to save any edits that were made. The mailbox will include little messages from workflows and other locations uh, that'll update you. And just note that you do also have an alert in the top corner. Notice the project data folder is here and that's gonna help you group data that may be in your project. So folders are great. They'll help you organize things, but create you can create folders in this little home folder to help you manage things like you do in Windows. Um, but you have other types of folders that'll help you do things like keeping things organized or executing searches. So if you're ever in the habit of just adding all of your revisions to a folder so you don't have to search on them, there are better ways to do it than that. So this has been an overview of a, some of the features that we have available for objects in the system. We've talked through a lot of different components that we can see inside of the display. Um, we've looked at relationships between objects and creating data sets, et cetera. Now we do have a couple of blog posts related to um, creating data and interacting with data. So feel free to check those out under the using essential se section of the blog. But thanks for joining us today. In the next video that you're gonna learn about, uh, is you are going to go into little use cases like what if you have to create an object or what if you have to create, edit an object and then submit it into a workflow. And we're going to start working with the data a little bit more realistically and we may go into nuances like drag and drop or things that we may have to interact with as we get into this client.